These days, people tend to think that Milton consists of little more than its high street and the vicinity. Others suggest that Milton lies to the north of the main road, or even the railway line. But the railway is relatively modern, arriving in the 1850s. So just how big was Milton? Where did its boundaries lie? In the 19th century, to distinguish this Milton from Kent's other Miltons near Gravesend and Canterbury, the town was identified as Milton Next Sittingbourne. Resentful of the declining status of their town as a historic backwater, dependent increasingly upon its prosperous neighbour, the Miltonians resurrected an ancient name, insisting that it be known as Milton Regis. Adding to the confusion, for the registration of births, marriages and deaths, the whole of this district, including Sittingbourne and the surrounding villages, was known as Milton Registration District. And so, cutting through all this, for the sake of simplicity, we shall call the town Milton. Milton's boundaries were laid down centuries ago, back in the days when the principal transport route serving the town was not the railway, but the creek. The creek, as can be seen on this plan, lies to the east of the town. It was almost certainly the reason why the town grew up here originally in prehistoric times attracting hunter-gatherers who wanted easy access to fisheries and particularly Milton's oysters. Believe it or not, that delicacy, the Milton oyster, is said to have been famous 2,000 years ago when our town's main road was being constructed by slave labour under the heel of the Roman Empire. Sadly, Milton's oyster beds died out just over a hundred years ago, perhaps because of overfishing or pollution. A hammer blow was said to have been the severe winter of 1890-91. to The Roman road is still with us. Surfaced in stone, it has always been a principal artery connecting the Channel Coast and mainland Europe with Canterbury, the Midway Towns and London. Londinium, as the Romans called it. Passing through our district, the road is a kind of boundary marker separating the marshy districts on the north flank from the drier ones on the south side. Sittingbourne spreads out on both sides of the road, to which it owes its origins a kind of service station, caring for the travellers traipsing to and fro. If it weren't for the road, Sittingbourne wouldn't exist as a separate entity and this district would have been known quite simply as Milton, or if you prefer it, Milton Regis. South of the road, as we can see from this plan, two tongues of Milton touch the parishes of Borden and Tunstall and, just here, a separate part, an enclave of Sittingbourne, is surrounded by Borden and Milton. To the north, Milton adjoins Bobbing and I Wade, and east of the creek lies the parish of Merston. Twice as big as Sittingbourne, its uppity neighbour, the land area of ancient Milton covered four square miles, more or less centred upon its historic parish church, around which, they say, the original town centre was gathered before it was moved up onto the hill a thousand years ago during the troubled reign of King Edward the Confessor. Though the original boundaries of the town must surely date back to the early Middle Ages, we can see that more recently there have been changes. On this plan, Milton has been coloured pink. You can see that some of the lines do seem to be rather arbitrary, geometrical rather than geographical. I wonder why. A short section of the southern boundary follows the London Road, but generally the layout of the roads is ignored. In West Sittingbourne, on what is called Hollybank Hill, the boundary between Milton and Sittingbourne even cuts through the middle of a house, number 8 London Road, where in the early 20th century there lived a Dr William Noble. Dr Noble was often heard to remark that, I take my meals in Sittingbourne but I go to bed in Milton. Before Dr Noble lived there, this house was occupied by Henry Packham, the brickmaker and barge builder. He had a large family, pictured here in the garden. 
The town boundary divided this garden as well as the house, hence the family were in Sittingbourne but the cameraman was in Milton. At its southern extremity, where it met the parish of Tunstall, the historic boundary of Milton ran along the southern edge of the sports ground in Gorecourt Road, and then swung round to the old Oast House in Bell Road. That Oast stands just inside the borders of Milton, as did one corner of Sittingbourne Cemetery, and perhaps even more surprisingly, nearly half of Sittingbourne's recreation ground. We can imagine the discussions between the two councils apportioning the cost of maintenance in the cemetery and the recreation ground, just two small instances of why it was far better to have one local authority. In that vicinity in the 19th century and in the early 20th, lots of houses were built. Park Road was the main thoroughfare of that part of town, leading to Gorecourt Park, a large private estate in the parish of Tunstall. In Park Road, Milton had two public houses. At the top, there was the Gorecourt Arms, and towards the bottom, close to the Sittingbourne border, we have the Park Tavern. In the 19th century, because so many Miltonians were living in that, rather outlying part of town, far from the parish church, it was decided to build, in Park Road, a new church which was dedicated to the Virgin Mary. Since 1974, Sittingbourne and Milton have both been part of what is now called Swaleborough Council. Prior to that, for just over 40 years, there was a single urban district council providing local government for both our towns. All that was a long time ago, but even now, over 90 years after the towns were merged, there are still surviving some indicators on the ground where the boundary cut across our 19th century road system. The Ordnance Survey plans produced during the 19th century tell us that the town boundary was marked by many boundary stones and markers, typically with an M for Milton and an S for Sittingbourne carved into them. Just a few examples here. This one would have been where the new side road is now off Charlotte Street called Lywood Drive. Two boundary stones close together near Laburnum Place. One in Gibson Street. This one in Hawthorne Road. In London Road. on the west side of Hollybank Hill. This one somewhere near Johnson House Gardens as it is now. The boundary crosses Rock Road back to London Road. A plate marker in Ufton Lane. One here in William Street. And one here on the edge of the recreation ground. Nowadays, very few of our marker stones survive. But there is this one on the forecourt of number 65 West Street. Another across the road in the front wall of number 8 London Road. This is at the bottom of Borden Lane. This one at the top of Bell Road, where Milton shares a border with the parish of Tunstall. And this one near the Oast House in Bell Road. When Sittingbourne and Milton were separate entities, some of the boundaries between them were straddled by the paper mill with its mill pond and substantial buildings, all enclosed by a high brick wall with several large entrance gateways. The gateway in Church Street, Milton, opposite the old public house called the Lion, was always known as the Lion Gate. There, set in the boundary wall, was a marker brick. When, a few years ago, that huge brick wall was destroyed, along with all the other buildings on the historic paper mill site, I wonder whether anyone thought to rescue that 
one significant important brick. But there does remain some rather less obvious evidence of the old boundary. Here in Albany Road, beside Sittingbourne's Recreation Ground, there is evidence that the area was once governed by two different district councils. These gutters are in Milton and these are in Sittingbourne. In Ufton Lane, on the boundary wall beside the block of flats known as Wingate Court, this metal plate shows where the boundary between the two towns crossed the road. Not far away, in Rock Road, there are the usual nameplates at each end. But there's another nameplate, bearing the name of the road, fixed to the front wall of a house halfway up the street. The old border used to run between number 22 and number 20 but mysteriously the sign is on the front wall of number 26. In the 1920s, when the merger of the two towns was being considered and discussed, the populace were invited to vote, a referendum. The East Kent Gazette reported that the majority of the population of Milton were not in favour, but nevertheless the merger took place. Then there followed a debate about the title of the new combined urban district council. Which name should come first? Should it be Milton and Sittingbourne or the other way round? Should precedence be given to the ancient town and port or its upstart partner, which, though far smaller, was certainly more prosperous? Eventually, after what must have been a rather heated debate, they decided to call the new local authority Sittingbourne and Milton Urban District Council. Since then, the old boundary between our two towns has become an irrelevance. And now over 90 years since the merger, few of us are aware of where it used to be. If you have found this video interesting, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit our website.